these are herb beds and flower beds. We try to have them scattered through the garden to keep our diversity up, to make sure we have a high level of beneficial insects, you know. I'll give you one example of that, and then we'll move on to other stuff. Dr. McDonald tells a story of two Baconid wasps flying out from their, from their hatching, right? They're flying out, they're sisters, they're looking for some place to go. One stops in a parking lot, right? The other one comes to our farm, right? Okay. The, the one's in the parking lot and along comes a male because they always do, right? And they mate. That one lays 30 eggs and they're all male. They're gonna go looking for other females, right? The one that came to our farm, she lands on a broccoli plant that's in flower because we let our bro some of our broccoli go to flower. She has a great meal because she feeds on the flowers. Surprise, surprise, okay? Then along comes a male like they always do. She mates, she lays 300 eggs and they're all female. That if you have the food, you ramp up the level of predation massively. And you get mostly balanced. We have very few insect problems. I won't say we don't have some intractable ones, and I won't say we have them all fall, have, have them all solved. But we have most of them solved. You know, I just saw a survey that CFSA did about the worst bugs, and I looked at them, and there's a few I can't tell you why they're solved, like cucumber beetles, but I know we don't have to worry about them. I can't tell you what's, what's controlling them, but I know you don't have to worry. Most of them, though, I can tell you exactly how we can Well, that doesn't help us much, Pat. Well, do, do we have time? You know? That's it. We will. We'll do a radio show on it. You can All listen right. in. Okay? We're going to film the class, you know? I mean, you know, it's just we don't have time. This is not, I can't give the whole class here. Um, okay. Um, Tim, as we come into the garden, why don't you talk about what, you're, what you see as your big, your big role here? My big role. Right. Well, the main thing you love to do in that planting and canning. Right. That's what I love Tim's, doing. Tim's goal is to make sure that this food gets preserved. You know, we not only want to make sure that we feed the hungry, but we want to make sure that we have anything that can be canned. Can. Yeah. That last year was the first year doing it. How many? How many jars did you do all together? Mm, I think it was like 700. Oh wow. Yeah. And this Pints, year there'll be a lot more than that. A lot more. Yeah. yeah a whole lot more. He's already he already did how many jars of, of beets? 40. Yeah, if you got to try those beets, they're in there. You should try them. They're really spectacular. Are you, was, are you canning and drying? Just canning. Just canning. But we're looking at drying. We're, we're actually putting in a facility that is going to make biochar, and we have a kiln that's going to dry the wood so we make the char most efficiently. And that kiln, we're also going to have double as a dehydrator. So we will be drying too. Yeah. I do a lot Trying of drying. Uh, I have the squash. We so also just emptied out a bed here uh, for garlic. So really, and a crop that's needing really to be planted pretty soon is going to be parsnips. Yeah, so we're going to get a good yield on parsnips. And Rocco, are you nearby? Yeah, I'm right here. Rocco, I think we're going to flame this bed. Do you want to talk about our stale bedding process? We do a lot of control with mulch, but we also do stale bedding. Which one are we doing for? This one here, we'll rake the leaves off and we'll prep it. We'll get it wet and get the weeds up and then. So Pat talked a little bit already about uh, kind of reestablishing a bed, but it's already establishing weeds and whatnot, lasagna. And then if you're big scale, organic or conventional, a lot of those guys lay down their plastic or landscape fabric or whatnot. We do a lot of mulching with um, uh, straw or leaves or grass clippings or hay or whatnot. But that's all the easy stuff, because you prep your bed and whatever, with a tractor by hand, however big you are, and you plant your plant, the plant's this big. You already got your plastic or whatever, and then you come on with your hay and straw, or whatever mulch you're using. The tricky part, in my humble opinion, is when you're direct seeding, when you're planting your carrots, when you're planting your corn, your beet, so on and so forth. How do you compete, because you've got a nice fresh bed, and then how do you compete with the weeds, they're germinating because you fertilize it and you're watering it and you're doing all this stuff to it. But your crop's seed is in there as well. One of the methods we use is called flaming. I got a backpack, got a propane tank on it, big torch. That's a flamer. Um, and what you do is you come along and, you're, and you flame the bed, you flame the weeds. And, and technically, well, there's three things. One, it doesn't... It doesn't kill a perennial established weed. It won't kill grass. But you're, we have a lot of uh, Calisoga, Calisoga, Wasca. We have a lot of um, uh, amaranth, 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 big weed, so on and so forth. It'll wipe that stuff right out. 
Um, technically, you need one tenth of a second on the leaf surface. And technically, again, what you're doing is you're actually boiling the water inside the cell of the plant. And once you cross your flamer over it, you can see it turn a lot uh, darker and the steam comes up. Um, now, as far as stealth bedding, and this is when you, you kind of got to be on the ball a little bit and have your scheduling right, but if you can prep a bed and have a bread uh, ready to be planted, already fertilized, and whatever you're going to do to it, but then don't plant it. Wait a week, wait two weeks if you can, and grow. You can even water it and grow the weeds. Make the weed seeds flush. Make them germinate. And not to sound violent, but you're setting them up for the slaughter. <laughs> Let it grow up, you get nice and established and tender and they're germinated and come in and plant them. Um, and again, you got to have your timing there because that's an extra one to two weeks before you actually plant. But um, it's, it's tough when if you don't plant, it, it really helps. It's tough when you plant your beets or carrots or whatever, you, when you direct seed and your your vegetable crops and your weed crop is is germinating on an even keel. Um, and as far as when we're doing it with the vegetables established, we do this little 24 hour rule. And what we'll do is this. We'll take this bed, we'll plant, we'll prep it, get everything ready to go. Maybe we cell bedded it, maybe we didn't. But you plant it. You plant one foot. Water it. Do everything that you're going to do to plant the whole row. Get all your preparations in order. Just plant a little bit. Wait 24 hours. Plant the rest of it. Treat this area that you planted the day before and the area that in your entire bed all the same conditions, same amount of water, so on and so forth. And keep your eye on that little patch. You know, and you need to know the um, cotyledon. Cotyledon. No, oh, Pat, you beat me to it. You need to know your cotyledon of whatever you planted the first leaves. And the instant you see them pop on that first period, you know you've got 24 hours, and then you come in and you can plant the rest of your heads. And you've got, they've got an even kill, and then tomorrow they probably get determined. And it doesn't prevent weeds, it doesn't eliminate them, but it, it does knock them back, and it does give you a good, a good head start on, um, on, direct, on weeding direct, direct season heads. And what were you calling that? Method. Flaming, stale bedding. When you prep it in order to be flamed and wait a while and then flame it, that stale, stale bedding. It will kill exposed seed of. It will. Okay. Expose like cover crop seed or, or well, some like, vegetable you know, seed. If it was like carrots doing like what you're talking about doing or, or okra or something like that. Um, if it's like a tiny seed that's not. Under the soil. If it's a tiny seed that's not under the soil, it'll Can't it'll get it. Yeah. It'll get it. Um, we plant most of our stuff. I don't know, Pat, Jeremy, what do we plant? Half inch carrots. Quarter, quarter inch to half inch. Quarter inch to like half inch. Use the earthquake inch. cedar. And it's yeah. you know using earthquake. It's pretty, pretty good. But the first time Rocco tried it with parsnips, he had that problem. Yeah, there's always a learning. Curve. You gotta learn. You know? Yeah, I didn't do it good enough, and then I killed all the things. And, you know, we have ever caught mulch on fire. I try and do it. We don't. We try and change as much as we can. The question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Flaming works. It works well, but it's it's easier. I think. I think we all think it's easier to transplant and then come in with the mulch. Well, well, many moons ago, this was all plowed, and we just kind of took time and established our bed, and our spacing, and then uh, given the different crops grown, given what's coming next and what was there previous, we kind of treat them accordingly. Um, but we do a lot of, you know, I, I think it's fair to say most of our weed control and and nutrients is through cover crops at this point, and lots of mulching and lasagna beds. In, in my, that, that half of the garden on the other side of that fence, we actually spaded it. Um, this side was already bedded, but that side had been left on cover crop that after it really was painful to look at. Remember that spring? Yeah, it was. It, it had washed pretty bad, and it was just like, and I just, I got here and I just said, we're just going to grow cover crops out here until fall. Well, you and must get a lot of snow here. Huh? You plant the things that actually 
the lab and snow. Oh, all the cover crops and then no problem. Yeah. You get the yeah. you get the spring growth. Yeah, the cover crops get established in fall and then and then they make it through through winter and uh, snow's poor man for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What was your question again? Um, oh, catching the mulch on fire. Oh yes. Have we ever caught the mulch on fire? Sure. Yeah, sure. Cow. Sure. <laughs> it's it's great to flame if you if the cosmos align and a nice little mist, you know, a nice little. Or in the morning when there's still dew on it. Yeah. Um, have the hose set up, you know. Um, the actual the, the really big farmers are doing acres and acres. They try and do it in the heat of the day, but then there's nothing out there to catch fire, you know. But it's much more efficient in the heat of the day. It's even more heat. The plants are more stressed already. We go the other way. We go for the cool cool of the morning. I'm afraid I don't understand that. Real fire? Well, I mean, oh, sorry. Real big farm. I mean, you know, real big, real high fire. production, conventional. That's what I meant. Big, big eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, real We're fire. definitely a real farm. Yeah. Thank real, you for correcting me. Real fire. 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 It's a flame torch. They a flame torch. torch. The ground yeah. to kill the weeds. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we got 10 minutes. All right, let's try and make it over the comp. Mm -hmm. um, this, okay. Real briefly, I was asked what this plant is. This plant is here. I searched this out and put it here because I learned from Brinkley Benson at Virginia Tech that this plant, Clary Sage, is the ultimate host for the predator of the tomato fruit worm, pepper borer slash corn borer. And so it's here. We only have one this year, but this is going to make lots of babies. And we're going to have them all over the farm. And we have a little bit of tomato fruit worm pressure in our greenhouse. We're gonna have I love that our beneficial yeah, insect so plants are deeply so. multifunctional. I mean, I can usually give you many um, uses of them. Mm -hmm. For instance, those leeks are gone to seed. We let them go to seed. They'll be spectacular for insects, and we'll get our seed crop. You know, mm -hmm. our trick is to grow. Um, if you can find a market for it, the pod, the, the radish pod, the plants that are grown for their pods. One's called rat tail, which I hate the name, but. You can actually get a crop after it flowers. So first it feeds the beneficials. And we're, spraying those. we're spraying the tomatoes probably twice a week. Compost tea once and then either um, Serenade or Sonata. I love these names, you know. Um, or Oxidate. And always with Regalia. Maybe not with the Oxidate. What is Regalia? Regalia is, a, is, is not really a fungicide. It, it raises the phenol levels in the plants. And they, they're more resistant. They, they're not a good host for fungi. It's suitable for organic? Suitable it's for it's NLP organic? allowed. It's AMRI approved. Yeah. yeah, I need to find out. yeah right. That's one of our C conventional growers use a lot of also. Yeah. Mm. CPS, which I can't get much from, mm. they save a real good price on it. Nice. You know? Nice. Where do you get your organic products at? We have to go far and wide for them, unfortunately. This bed was heavily lasagna bed. Bed it. Jeremy, if you're around, if you while you're walking, if you could tell people what we did with it. This one we really, really piled the lasagna stuff on because it's really a low area. We wanted to raise it up too. And it gave us a spectacular crop of butternut squash last year. Next year we probably will not go with cucurbits again, but this year we really needed a place for melons and so they got put in there. Yeah, this stuff is close. I mean, we're probably going to bring this out to make room for that to get it cooking. But um, it's very close to finished anyway. And that container over there, that little, we actually made that as part of a winter gardening class. Made that for less than $200. You got anybody how to do it, we'll have the video up of that one of these days. But in there, we've stored the last two piles we made. They were the ones that were 10 6 and 11 2. Um, so we really are getting great, great composting. It gets better and better all the time. We keep careful records. One, Tell them what you do. Well, and talk loud. Shout. Pretty much what I do is I make the compost. Uh, this is like the records if you guys want to look at them. You guys can see like the temperature, like the humidity, color, smell. Uh, pretty much we use like ma manure. We use that kind of stuff that's over there. And it turns into this. Basically right now we're working with a, a cow manure that's very high in corn stalks. And that actually makes the pretty perfect bulk density. 